Namaskar and good evening viewers. It's 9 p.m. time for the news on Sunset TV. I'm Rajiv Kumar Singh. The next half an hour gives me an opportunity to update you with the latest news from the national and international arena. First up, the headlines we are tracking at this hour. Prime Minister Modi inaugurates the Centre State Science Summit under his course need to make India a global centre of research and innovation, urges states to frame modern policies related to science and technology. Government issues advisory outlining risks for students planning to study medicine in China, cautions them on stringent norms to qualify to practice in India. ED conducts raids against promoters of fake mobile gaming apps in Kolkata, seizes cash worth over 7 crore rupees. Amir Shah targets Rahul Gandhi over Bharat Joro Yatra, says Congress works only for appeasement and vote bank politics. Proclaimed Britain's new monarch, King Charles III pays a tribute to Queen Elizabeth II, says reign of the late Queen was unmatched in dedication and royalty. A quick look now at our Flash News segment. CJI UU Lalit hopes more women will join every level in judiciary soon, suggests Adjudicatory functions to be taught at law colleges. Union Minister Hardi Puri announces the start of Swachh Amrit Mahotsav, a fortnight devoted to galvanized action around cleanliness from 17th September. Prime Minister Modi expresses grief over the demise of eminent archaeologist B.B. Lal, says Lal's contribution to culture and archaeology are unparalleled. All India Coordination Meeting of Rashtri Swam Sevak Sangh starts in Raipur. Three-day meeting will end on 12th of September. Tributes paid to former Union Home Minister and first Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Govind Ballav Pant on his 135th birth anniversary. Indian Railways to introduce advanced and improved Vande Bharat 2. New train, lighter and faster with maximum speed up to 180 km per hour. Asaduddin Owaisi says India should try a weaker PM in 2024 to do something for weaker sections of society, targets Nitish and Mamata. People feeding stray dogs liable if the canines attack others, says Supreme Court. U.S. President Joe Biden to attend funeral of Queen Elizabeth II, funeral expected to take place in London on 19th of September. And Iga Swiatek and Ons Jaboa bid for U.S. Open Grand Slam trophy in women's singles final. Now news in detail. Prime Minister Modi on Saturday called for concerted efforts to make India a global centre of research and innovation. He urged state governments to frame modern policies related to the field of science and technology. Addressing the inaugural session of the Centre State Science Conference through a video conference, Modi said India is moving ahead with the mantra of Jai Jawan, Jai Kisan, Jai Vigyan and Jai Anusandhan. He added that the nation needs to work together on various fronts to make India a global center of research and innovation in Amrit Kal, while taking research in field of science and technology to the local level. Bharat ke vajjyanik kamal kar rahe hai. Bharat ke vajjyaniko ki har choti badi uplabdi ko सेलिब्रेट करने से देश में साइंस के प्रति जो रुझान पैदा होगा वो इस अमृत काल में हमारी बहुत मदद करेगा 
Union Home Minister Amit Shah is on a two-day visit to Rajasthan addressing the BJP booth worker Sankalp Mahasammelan. He has said the Congress government should give an account of its work after completing five years in the state. Amit Shah also attended the concluding session of the National Executive Committee meeting of the BJP Backward Classes Front in Jodhpur. He accused the Congress government in Rajasthan of adopting the policy of vote bank and appeasement. Assembly elections are due in Rajasthan in October-November next year. किसानों को एक हजार रुपया बिजली बिल में सब्सिडी दी और जल स्वालंबन अभियान भी शुरू किया Amir Shah visited the Tanut Mata Temple near the Indo-Pakistan border in Jaisalmer he also offered prayers at the Tanut Devi Temple The home minister also paid homage to martyred soldiers at the Victory Stump in Tanot. In the 1965 India-Pakistan War, the Pakistani army had dropped several bombs targeting the temple, but none exploded. These unexploded bombs are on display in the temple. In 1971 war, during the Longewala battle, Pakistani tanks got stuck in the sand near the temple and the Indian Air Force bombed them easily. Amir Shah laid the foundation stone of the border tourism development project. The project is aimed at increasing tourist facilities in the border area. The Enforcement Directorate has taken action against the promoters of fake mobile gaming apps as part of a money laundering probe. In the raids conducted in Kolkata, cash worth over 7 crore rupees was seized. The central agency issued a statement said action was taken on the promoter Amir Khan of gaming app E Nuggets Kolkata police had registered an FIR against the company and its promoters in February 2021 the agency is probing whether the apps and its promoters have links with apps controlled by China India has issued an advisory to students wishing to study medicine in China the advisory warns them about the risks of studying in China. The advisory has cautioned students about the low pass percentage, the compulsion to learn the official language and to strict rules for participating as a doctor in India. The advisory comes at a time when several Indian students studying in Chinese medical institutions have been sitting at home for over two years due to Beijing's COVID visa restrictions, at present over 23,000 Indian students are enrolled in Chinese universities. Many of them are medical students. China recently issued return visas to select students after two years of restrictions. India has, as of now, opted out of the trade pillar of the 14-member Indo-Pacific Economic Framework, IPEF, but has decided to join the remaining three subjects pertaining to supply chain, clean economy and fair economy. Commerce and Industry Minister Piyush Goel said this to media persons after the conclusion of the two-day IPEF ministerial meet in Los Angeles. 14 countries had discussions in Los Angeles to strengthen trade ties in the Indo-Pacific region. Goel said that this group will define the rules of trade between countries that believe in fair rules and transparency in future. Very exhaustively in all the various streams of discussion on three out of four pillars related to supply chains, tax and 
anti corruption and clean energy we were very much comfortable with the final outcome and text goel also met australian commerce minister don ferrell they discussed ways to boost bilateral trade and cooperation and agreed to an economic cooperation and trade agreement between the two countries now let us take a look at more news from across the nation Union Minister of Environment, Forest and Climate Change Bhupendra Yadav inaugurated the first national conference on sustainable coastal management in Bhubaneswar today. The conference is being organized by the Green Climate Fund supported project enhancing climate resilience of India's coastal communities. The BJP has nominated former Tripura Chief Minister Biplab Kumar Dev as the party's candidate for by election to the lone rajya sabha seat in the state by election to the seat will be held on september 22nd the seat fell vacant after dr manik saha resigned in july this year following his appointment as chief minister of tripura ministry of ports shipping and waterways plans to build a national maritime heritage complex at the site of the indus valley civilization in lothal gujarat a first of its kind complex in india this center will showcase india's rich and diverse maritime heritage the foundation stone for the n m h c project was laid by Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the consent for the master plan was given in March 2019. The Delhi High Court has dismissed a plea for a change in the examination date either for the civil services mains or for FSSAI recruitment both scheduled on September 24th uh, saying doing so at this belated stage will cause grave inconvenience and prejudice uh, to other candidates 5554 new covid cases were reported in the last 24 hours in india health ministry data shows the number of patients under treatment has come down to 48850 over 214 crore 76 77 lakh vaccine doses have been administered so far under the nationwide vaccination drive for the prevention of the disease Kotila village of Dharchula in Uttarakhand suffered devastation due to a cloudburst on Friday night near the Indo-Nepal border in Pithoragarh Flash floods in Kali River submerged 28 houses a woman is reported to be missing according to the district magistrate of Pithoragarh a cloudburst at midnight in Banga Bagar village off the other side of the Indo-Nepal border caused the sudden floods Let us now take a break in the bulletin on the other side UN chief reiterates appeal for assistance for flood ravaged Pakistan Desh ke kul makhane utpadan ka 80 faizi isi mitranchal क्षेत्र से होता है अगर एक फल में इतने बीज हमारे 50 बीज कम से कम बनते हैं तो एक हेक्टेयर से कम से कम जो पैदावार होगा वो 25 क्विंटल प्रति हेक्टेयर होगा काफी बड़ा मार्केट पिछले दो सालों में डेवलप हुआ है मकाने का तो हम लोग युवाओं को उजागर करते हैं आप स्नैकिंग तो आप करेंगे ही आप हेल्दी स्नैक करिए ताकि वो स्नैकिंग आपको नुकसान नहीं करे क्या आप किसी कानूनी समस्या से घिरे हैं नहीं पता क्या करें क्या कहता है कानून क्या है आपके अधिकार समझिए कानून की बारीकियों को कानून की पाठशाला में सिर्फ संसद टीवी पर
Welcome back to the news. It's the time for the updates from the Russia-Ukraine war front. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and the head of NATO said the six-month war in Ukraine is entering a critical period. Blinken urged Western backers to maintain their support in the coming months and through the winter. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg said Ukrainian forces have been able to stall Moscow's offensive in Donbass, but warned that Allied unity will be tested in coming months with pressure on energy supplies and the soaring cost of living caused by Russia's war. A Ukrainian army spokesman said on Saturday that the military has regained control of over 30 settlements occupied by Russian soldiers around Kharkiv. He also said over 1,000 square kilometers of Ukrainian territory had been liberated. Ukraine reported that over the past 24 hours, Russia conducted 13 missile and 23 airstrikes on targets hitting infrastructure in many settlements. Europe's largest nuclear power plant was operating in emergency mode Friday for the fifth straight day, promoting the head of uh, uh, the UN atomic watchdog to call for setting up an immediate safety zone to prevent a nuclear accident. Uh, the sixth reactor, Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, came under the control of Russian forces, by, is being operated by Ukraine staff. Uh, the plant and surrounding areas have been repeatedly hit by shelling that Russia and Ukraine blame on each other. Russian forces attacked Ukrainian military targets in Donetsk and Kharkiv with high precision weapons, while Ukraine said its troops have recaptured part of lost territory from Russian troops. A Russian Defense Ministry spokesman said during a daily briefing that Ukrainian troops withdrew after repeated unsuccessful attacks in the direction of Mykolai. The Russian aerospace force use high precision weapons to strike the Ukrainian 93rd Mechanized Brigade in the Donetsk region. The United Nations is uh, trying to fulfill the Black Sea Grain Initiative amid the Ukraine crisis and has achieved some initial results, said a spokesman for the UN Secretary General at a press briefing on Friday. Russia and Ukraine signed the Black Sea Grain Initiative with Turkey under the UN auspices in July to establish a secure maritime humanitarian corridor to restore Ukrainian grain, food and fertilizer exports while facilitating the entry of Russian food products and fertilizers to world markets. The term of the agreement is 120 days. Here are today's global updates. <music> King Charles III was on Saturday proclaimed the new monarch of Britain in a ceremony followed by a gun salute and the reading of proclamations in London and across the four corners of the United Kingdom. Holding his first privy council meeting, the new king made his personal declaration to assume the duties and responsibilities of sovereignty and follow in the footsteps of his late mother. do now hereby, with one voice and consent of tongue and heart, publish and proclaim that the Prince Charles Philip Arthur George is now, by the death of our late sovereign of happy memory, become our only lawful and rightful liege lord, Charles III. The senior herald in England officially proclaimed King Charles as Britain's new monarch on Saturday from St. James Palace's balcony. David White, the Garter King of Arms, read out the official proclamation to crowds gathered near the palace. Three cheers for His Majesty the King! The official proclamation of King Charles on Saturday was followed by three cheers at London's St. James Palace. Three cheers for Majesty the King! The Garter King of Arms shouted from the balcony, 
prompting a response of hip hip hurrah from soldiers below while they raised their bearskin hats the death of 96 year old queen elizabeth on thursday after 70 years on the throne set in train long established and highly choreographed plans for days of national mourning and a state funeral that will be held in just over a week an accession council met on saturday to proclaim charles as king with the son and heir william wife camilla and britain's new prime minister liz truss among those to sign the proclamation The public has never before been able to watch the ceremony which is traditionally followed by another proclamation on the balcony of St James's Palace. The accession council is formed of privy councillors who have advised the monarch since the Norman era. It includes about 670 senior politicians, the Archbishop of Canterbury, bishops of the Church of England, the Lord Mayor of London, senior civil servants and high commissioners from the 14 other realms which have the monarch as their head of state bureau report sansa tv the united states is one of the countries that benefits the most from europe's surge for an alternative to russian natural gas experts say that this will set black energy transition strategies of countries as a result Demosthenes Floros, senior energy economic analyst of the Center of European Studies, says that in March the European Union decided to buy an additional 15 billion cubic meters of liquefied natural gas from the US to replace Russian gas. However, the price and the transportation cost of LNG imported from the US is higher than that from Russia, and Europe has to pay a huge economic cost for this, making the US one of the major beneficiaries. In addition to higher costs, Floro says that the search for alternatives to Russian pipeline gas would also set Italy back into its transition to green energy. In order to cope with the possible energy shortage this winter, the Italian Ministry of Ecological Transformation proposed to increase the power generation of non-natural gas fields. In the first half of 2022, while reducing imports from Russian natural gas, Italy significantly increased imports from Russian coal and crude oil for power generation. With soaring energy prices and high inflation in European countries, more and more Italian companies cannot afford high energy costs. Floro said that continued sanctions against Russia will only make more Italian companies go bankrupt and more people lose their jobs. Bureau Report Sansa TV United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres has appealed to the international community for massive support for Pakistan to respond to the ongoing climate catastrophe devastating the lives of millions. Here are the details. United Nations Chief Antonio Guterres on Saturday visited several areas of Pakistan ravaged by floods as he rounded off a two-day trip aimed at raising awareness of the disaster accompanied by prime minister shahbaz sharif guterres looked at the flooding of sindh province as he flew to sakar to meet the chief minister video filmed by the pakistan government showed guterres reiterated that massive financial support was needed to overcome the crisis record monsoon rains and glacier melt in northern mountains have triggered floods that have killed more than 1391 people sweeping away houses roads railway tracks bridges livestock and crops huge areas of the country are inundated and hundreds of thousands of people have been forced from their homes the government says the lives of nearly 33 million have been disrupted pakistan estimates the damage at 30 billion dollars and both the government and guterres have blamed the flooding on climate change in july and august pakistan received 15.4 inches of rain or nearly 190% more than the 30 year average the southern province of sindh has seen 466% more rain than average bureau report sansa tv And now in the world briefs. 
Five Hong Kong speech therapists who were sentenced to 19 months in jail after being convicted for sedition. The five executive committee members of the General Union of Hong Kong Speech Therapists published a series of children's books that a court said was aimed at inciting hatred against authorities. They had pleaded not guilty to the charge. Authorities have cracked down on dissent in Hong Kong since pro-democracy protests in 2019, arresting dozens of activists while others have fled abroad. President Joe Biden made an election year visit to an overwhelmingly Republican part of Ohio on Friday for the groundbreaking of a semiconductor plant. Biden spoke at the site of Intel Corp's new $20 billion semiconductor manufacturing facility near Columbus. He praised it as a sign of things to come. Intel backed the Ohio project in anticipation of the passage of the Chips and Science Act. The Chips and Science Act aims at jump-starting domestic production of semiconductors in response to supply chain disruptions that have slowed production of automobiles. The lighting of public buildings was stopped in the northern French city of Lille to reduce energy consumption as winter approaches and prices soar. Other measures announced by city officials include lowering temperatures in most public buildings and pools, closing the city's tropical gardens and closing two fountains. The whole package represents a 7% cut in city's energy use. A passage Passenger train and a freight train collided on a Friday night in central Croatia, killing at least three people and injuring 11 others. The collision happened around 9.30 p.m. near Novska, which is close to the border with Bosnia. So far, three bodies were found, but more victims could still be found. The cause of the collision was not immediately clear. The passenger train was a local line carrying 13 people. A twin-engine plane contracted by U.S. Navy carrying two civilian pilots slid off the end of a runway after it touched down at Naval Air Station North Island and came to rest on a spit of sand in San Diego Bay. The plane's nose was damaged but the pilots were able to depart on their own and were taken to a hospital for observation. A look of today's sports stories. Carlos Alcaraz defeated Francis Tier 4 in an epic US Open semi final, setting up a showdown for the title and the world number one ranking against Casper Ruud. Alcaraz bet Tier 4 6 7, 6 3, 6 1, 6 7, 6 3. Norway's seventh ranked Ruud defeated Russia's Karen Kachinov. 7-6-6-2-5-7-6-2 to reach his second Grand Slam final of the year. He had lost in the French Open final to Rafael Nadal. The Lusley Stadium near Doha that Qatar will use for this year's FIFA World Cup final was put through its first sellout test on Friday with a match between the Egyptian and Saudi champions. Five-time champions of Sri Lanka will take on two-time winners of Pakistan in the final of the Asia Cup tomorrow in Dubai. Australian captain Aaron Finch retires from One Day Internationals after the third and the final ODI against New Zealand on Sunday. That's all in today's news. Keep watching Sunset TV for latest updates. Good night.